Hello everyone and in this video we're going to um, pretty much tie together all of the different interactivity uh, that we just created to create our own puzzle scene here. I've imported this asset um, that you can get on the Canvas course. Uh, it's this Puzzle Room FBX. Um, I'm just going to rename this real quick because I have a duplicate um, inside of my folder here and um, pretty much this is just the model that was created um, you know it's 3d modeling software package um, it's separated into different parts and uh, what we're going to do is make it so when we drag uh, drop our objects on the different plates uh, it'll open the doors so it's going to combine a bunch of things that we've done with interactivity uh, as well as some animation, so to be able to animate objects within our scene, to open doors, um, make um, different events get triggered by the interactivity that we're creating. Um, because a lot of this stuff is event-driven. I mean, everything we do, that we do is in games is event-driven. So, um, you know, we're going to see how these series of interactive events can come together to create, um, you know, some gameplay. Now, uh, to get started, uh, a couple of things here. Um, I think I'm going to want to update the um, player character controller um, prefab here. So what we'll do is we'll open up the prefab here and um, main camera and the ground check aren't here. Um, we've got overrides on and what we're going to end up doing is applying these new overrides to the original prefab. So I'm going to go to apply all and what they'll do now is if I hit open you'll see now the object holder and the raycast um, script from player is now on that prefab. Okay, and This is the new uh, prefab system in Unity where it allows you to edit um, prefabs in a separate area rather than inside of your game scene um, and it's pretty helpful uh, but I, I still end up, you know, reverting back to old workflows because I've been using Unity for so long. <clears throat> okay, so uh, to get this started, we're also going to um, prefab the pickup object. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw this in the prefabs folder. I'm going to throw the trigger plate in there. I don't think we're going to end up using it though, but I'll throw that in there as well. And I'm just going to save this scene. And I'm going to create a new scene. So I'm going to go to File. Um, actually, no, I'll just do it from the project panel like we have been. So I'll select the Scenes folder, go to the plus sign, and then click on Scene. And I'm going to call this Puzzle Room. And we'll open this up inside of Unity. All right, so we have this in there. Uh, we'll get started by dragging and dropping the Puzzle Room into the scene. And I'm just going to reset its position so that it's in the center of the world here. There's our puzzle room. I might adjust the direction light a bit here uh, so that we get more even lighting here. So it's not casting part of the scene in shadows. And um, let's see, let's do. 90 here, um, 0 on the Y, and 100 here. So now we're casting light directly down into our scene. As a matter of fact, I think I might rotate it this way a bit just to cast some light on the doors here. All right, cool. Um, so this is an object that was creating, created in some 3D modeling software and this is actually divided into a bunch of sub-objects within the scene. Um, so you can see that these, these, there are these two different poly surfaces. Uh, those are the, um, the different pressure plates that are inside the scene. Look at this one and this one. Matter of fact, I think I'm just going to shut lighting off. There we go. Lighting is off so we can see everything um, inside of our scene view for now. So we've got the two pressure plates, and then we've got the doors, which can also be selected individually. Okay, and those are nested within here. So you might want to label those. Um, I'll grab this one here, and I'll call this uh, door. Uh, 
I'll call it door right. And uh, I'll select this one. I'll call this one door. Oops. Door left. All right, so we have both of our doors now. And uh, we could select these pressure plates as well, but we need to color code these. We've got a red material already, so I'll drag and drop the red material onto this pressure plate. And uh, what I'll do is I'll duplicate one of these colored materials that we created, and I'll create a new one for blue. And I'll change this color to blue. Okay, and I'll drag and drop blue onto this pressure plate. All right, so we have two pressure plates now. Uh, we also have our pickup objects, so I'm going to drag those into the scene. Move these around a bit. And uh, we're also going to need another pickup object. Which I'll drag into the scene. Move this down. And um, some of them down so they're above. And what we're going to do is I'm going to color this one blue. And then we got this one, which is red. This one's already tagged as red box. Let's create a new tag for this one. And we'll call this one blue box. Alright, so we've got red box and blue box. I'll select blue box and tag him as blue box. Alright, so we have all of that set up. Uh, let's take our um, plates here, our different pressure plates here. And uh, um, actually, before we do that, let's see if the player interacts with the room. So let's grab our player controller from the prefabs here. And just as a quick test, I'm going to have you guys hit the play button. And I think he's going to fall right through, which is fine. The reason why he's falling through is because we haven't generated colliders for the 3D scene. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh man, I gotta go create colliders for each one of these objects. But when you import a 3D mesh like this, you can actually uh, create the colliders right from the mesh itself. It requires you to go into the project panel back to the original object that we imported, which is the Puzzle Room FBX. And there's a couple of different options here. There's one for models, there's one for rig, there's one for animations, but there's no animation data on this model. And then there's one for materials. Uh, I'm going to go over to model. And if we um, look through the list of options here, where is it? There's an option here for generate colliders. So I'm going to click on that. And then go down to the supply button here and click apply. Now what that'll do is it'll generate colliders for all the objects in the scene. So now if I hit play, we shouldn't fall through the floor. Yep, and there we are. We landed actually on top of the pressure plate. So we're probably going to want to move him into more of an appropriate area inside of the scene. So I'm going to grab him, move him here. And um, I'm also going to move him down a bit so that he doesn't fall all the way from the sky. And um, I think the next thing um, I'm going to want to do is delete the main camera. We're not going to need that main camera in this scene because there's one on our on our player. So if I hit the play button, should be able to look around here. And if I pick up these objects, oh, we don't have it set up yet to pick up the objects. So we're going to have to set that up as well. All right, cool. So we have the um, the the pieces in place uh, to start setting this up. So let's figure out why we can't pick up these objects at the moment. They both should have had the pick up object script on them. 
um, but I guess I didn't save the prefab with that on it. So let's add that script. So the mouse pickup script needs to be placed on these objects. All right. And um, let's edit this thing's prefab. Let's apply. Oh, <laughs> you know, I did. I. Uh, I overrid, I overrode one of them here. So let's see, this is blue box and then red box, both blue box now. Okay, so I wanted this guy to be red box and then to have the red material on him. All right, so that's good. So I'll fix that up now. All right, and um, if I play, I walk up to this thing. Uh, variable destination OBJ. Um, oh, mouse picture pickup object has not been defined, so we need to add that too. So Control T, and let's select the two pickup objects. And if we scroll down to the script, we don't have that destination OBJ. Uh, I have both of them selected here. That's inside of our player controller, right here, the OBJ holder. So if I select both of these and drag cancel um, I need to scroll down here before I do that and drag and drop it in here we've got OBJ holder showing up on the transform here and it should be on both objects now so we should be able to walk up and pick up these objects now um, and there it is so if I pick this up, I want to be able to drop it on this pressure plate. And if I pick this up, I want to be able to drop it on this pressure plate. Not saying on the side. Variable here. Why did it say that? Oh, it looks like I have duplicate scripts here on pickup obj1. So it must have happened when I created that prefab. So I'm going to remove the component and make sure that they don't have duplicate scripts on them. So that's why I was getting that error there. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is set up our trigger script on those two pressure plates. So to do that, let's um, select those objects in the scene. Select this one. And uh, I'm going to focus in on it. And it has a mesh collider on it, but what we're going to do is we're going to add that box collider component that we did earlier in that other video. And I'm going to edit this box collider so that it sits above. And so make it a little bit higher here. All right, and then we're going to set this to trigger. And we're going to take our trigger script that we created. And I'm going to drag it onto this object here. Uh, where's trigger script? I'm going to drag it here. And I'll add that script onto that object. And you're going to want to do that with the other plate as well. So I'll select this, add the box collider to it, edit the box collider, so that sits above here. And there it is on top of here. And we're going to want to add that. Um, trigger script to this as well. So the trigger object will add that to here as well. And there it is there. Okay, so we want to detect when the correct um, box has been placed on the correct plate. So that's going to be the next step here. Um, let's open up our trigger script um, again here. So we've got trigger object, and um, we're going to need a couple of things here. Uh, we're going to need a boolean here, and I'm just going to create a public 
bool and this is going to be for the red block and then we'll create another one for the blue block All right, so we have red block and blue block. And what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, in the update function, check to see um, you know, if the block is sitting on the correct platform here. So what we're going to want to do is uh, check to see uh, which block is which if they're staying on the trigger or if they're um, exiting the trigger. So um, what we'll do here is um, inside of our on trigger stay I'm just going to delete the debug log code that we had earlier and I'm going to create an if call dot game object dot tag and um, what we're going to want to do here is label have some sort of variable that labels um, which tag is which because since we end up um, using this script on multiple pressure plates uh, we don't want it so that if the player puts the red block on here um, you know and it's the blue pressure plate it still triggers the um, correct uh, result so what we're going to need here at the top is a string so we'll create a string we could do this in a couple of different ways we could create an enumerator from the tags and so forth but we'll just do this as a string and uh, we'll call this obj tag and I'm gonna make this a serializable field to make this a serializable field you create um, a set of brackets here and you put in serialized field and what that does is it makes this variable public in the inspector in the unity editor but it's private to this specific function so you, it can't be used outside of this function so we're going to check to see if the game object tag is equal to the tag that we're looking for um, which is obj tag so we're just going to type this in inside the editor inside of the game object so if it's equal to the obj tag we're going to have a condition here where we will then let it in and flip these booleans to true. So um, we're going to look for call.gameObject.tag. So we're going to check to see which color it is. And if it's equal to red box. Um, if it's equal to red box, then what we'll do is we'll set the bool above red box uh, red block I mean red block equal to true and we can copy this paste it down below and we'll do the same thing for blue and we'll change blue block to true and if we copy this entire if statement we can then put this in the exit for when we remove them or if they fall off or whatever so um, what we'll do is we'll set this to false okay so if we save these 
and head back to Unity and try this out, we should be able to identify which is which here. So if I look at the um, trigger script on the different surfaces, so if I select this one, and we look here, we'll see red block and blue block. So let's play, oh, I forgot to do something here. So what we want to do is put the layers in this OBJ tag. So you see how this is revealed here? So we're looking for blue box. And on this other platform, we're looking for red box, right? Because those are the corresponding colors that go with each. All right, so if I hit play, I have maximize on play turned off. Uh, I'm going to go pick up the blue box and put it on the right trigger plate. Oops, I didn't quite get it up there. Oh, <laughs> it's firing away because um, I think it's a little too high. I think I gotta lower this a little bit. And it's going into the collider. Yeah, I gotta lower these plates a bit. So let's take these two plates and lower them some. Try this again. Shooting right off. Let's try. Oh. oh, all right. Um, that's interesting. Did I not set that one to trigger? Let's see. Where is the blue plate here? Yep, that's the problem. So the box slider wasn't set to trigger. So basically what I was doing was I was putting the object right into the box slider and when I would let go and it would activate the uh, rigid body again, it would just make it fly off into space. So you want to make sure that those box sliders are triggered. And I'll do that for the other one just to make sure. I could have sworn I set that. Uh, maybe when I did the prefab earlier it messed it up. So let's look around here. Pick up the blue object, put it on the blue plate, and let's see here. Doesn't seem to be triggering anything here. I think it's because I just didn't have the thing out. Let's try this again here. Um, I forgot I didn't have any debug logs in there. Right, so let's move up close to this, pick up the object, and drop it on the plate. And I'm just going to hit escape and select the plate. And if we look here, blue block is checked off. So now we're seeing the result of the trigger script working. Um, what I'll do is I'll now grab the red block, pick that up and drop it here. And uh, if I check out the red pressure plate, red block is checked off. Cool. So in this video we set up the puzzle room scene. Um, in the next one what we'll do is we'll set up the animations so that the doors animate. And uh, last but not least um, there is a um, inside of the door here, what we'll do is we'll create a um, switch so that when we select the switch, it'll open the doors after we have the correct objects. Alright, so we'll see that in the next video.